Cargo e-bikes, my favorite e-bike category, and if you're shopping for one, you're in luck. A slew of great options just entered the market. The beauty of cargo e-bikes is that they make car replacement or even supplementing car trips possible, and this is a reality for our family since 2018. So if I could only own one style of e-bike, it would have to be a cargo e-bike. Before we get started, if you do decide to buy an e-bike, I'd appreciate it if you use our affiliate links down in the description where applicable. It's a free and easy way to support the channel, and it makes videos like the one you're watching possible. Thanks in advance, and maybe if you're not in the market, consider subscribing and giving this video a like to help spread the awesomeness of cargo e-bikes. And of course, if you want a deep dive where I cover every spec, check out our individual reviews of all of these cargo e-bikes. Since these are e-bikes I'd personally consider buying, be sure to stay tuned until the end where I'll share the cargo e-bike I'd personally buy. Let's begin. First, we have an e-bike that I think is going to be responsible for popularizing the category. Yes, it's the Electric Expedition. Electric is quickly becoming the brand synonymous with the best value e-bikes, period. The Expedition starts at just $13.99 for the 14 amp hour single battery version and $16.99 for the dual battery 28 amp hour model, just $300 more. This battery capacity is absolutely unheard of at this price, cargo e-bike or not. It is far and away the most affordable cargo e-bike in existence with its almost too good to be true price. Depending on when you purchase, Electric throws in some free accessories, but also has a slew of other options. If you think price equates to quality, you'll be happy to hear the Expedition has Zoom hydraulic disc brakes and the motor is probably overkill for flat road riding at 1,310 watts of peak power but that power will certainly come in handy for huge hills, especially while hauling cargo. The bike can reach speeds up to 28 miles per hour while pedaling or 20 miles per hour while using the right hand twist grip throttle and has some pretty impressive payload capacities. It is the only cargo e-bike on this list that advertises, at least publicly, class three speeds up to 28 miles per hour. Beyond the great specs, the Expedition was the easiest for us to assemble out of all the cargo e-bikes due to Electric's focus on customer experience. They're also known for their solid customer support. So it's hard to follow such a compelling e-bike in the Electric Expedition, but the event in a bound deserves its own praise, but for different reasons. This e-bike is the best looking but still affordable cargo e-bike and it's priced at $21.99. As usual, we have a vent in smooth welds, but I also really dig the frame design. Here are the main differentiators. First, a torque sensor, which measures pedal input and gives you more motor power as you put in more of your own effort. It's simply a more natural riding experience and the rest of the e-bikes on this list are using simple cadence sensors. It also has a name brand SR Suntour suspension fork, might I add that it's the only bike on this list to have front suspension. And finally, a dropper seat post for ease of dismounting and mounting. The 15 amp hour battery hidden nicely into the frame is slightly above average and Aventon states up to 50 miles range. The torque sensor helps eke out that extra range due to the efficiency gains of how the motor is engaged. Premium touches are found throughout the abound as you'd expect. The color LCD screen, something new for Aventon, turn signals and Tektro hydraulic disc brakes. The motor is 750 watts, but it's surely peaking higher than that and is plenty powerful. The max speed is 20 miles per hour with the throttle or while pedaling. Total weight capacity is 440 pounds with 143 on the included rear rack. Aventon 2 has some high quality accessories. The frame bag and footboards are included. The Abound comes in two colors, but wait, there's more. Aventon has dealerships around the US so you can buy it in store or online, your choice. Next up, we have the Rad Power Bikes Rad Wagon 4 at $19.99, which at the time of its original release was, in my opinion, the best affordable cargo e-bike offering on the market. Now with the increased competition, it's not as obvious of a choice, but there are still some niceties about the Rad Wagon. Note that the recent recall on this e-bike had put a hamper on both sales and excitement around this e-bike, and it impacted nearly 30,000 Rad Wagon owners, which goes to show how popular this bike was. Where the Rad Wagon really shines is the accessories. We've used the caboose paired with the Conestoga and two Thule Yup seats pretty extensively. And the large front basket with roll top bag has held everything we've needed. The weight capacity is lower at 350 pounds and the rear rack is rated at 120 pounds. 
I'm a huge fan of the geometry, telescoping seat post, and adjustable stem as a taller rider, and this is something that shouldn't be overlooked. The Radwagon 4 has Tektro Aries mechanical disc brakes. Of course, now we've seen hydraulic at the same or lower prices. The 14 amp hour battery is average size and is externally mounted on the frame. A 750 watt peak motor is found in the rear. It's fine for flat roads without a doubt, but hills can be a challenge when you have it fully loaded, so keep that in mind. On the other hand, the pedal assist levels are well tuned. And one unique thing about the Radwagon is their custom 22 by 3 inch tires, so you'll likely need to purchase tubes and tires direct from Rad Power Bikes, which at this time are out of stock. Despite Rad's recent hiccups, the Radwagon 4 is still a solid e-bike from the largest seller of e-bikes in North America, and the bike is offered in three different colors. The Radwagon holds a special place in my heart as our first e-bike was a 2018 Radwagon that we put over 4,000 miles on. As a side note, I'm really excited for the next generation Radwagon, whenever that may come. Maybe even a Radwagon 5 Plus. Pretty please, Rad. Next, one company that has been impressing me, but is lesser known, is Blix. They've released some pretty unique e-bikes as of late, and we'll be covering them more. We've reviewed the Blix Packagini. They've granted three wishes from their previous generation Packa. Hydraulic disc brakes, a more powerful motor, 750 watts nominal, 1,350 watts peak, and more battery, i.e. the option for two of them. It's priced at $20.99 for the single 14 amp hour battery and $24.99 for the dual battery for a total of 28 amp hours of capacity. It's still reasonably priced when you stack up the specs against other cargo e-bikes. You can even sometimes catch certain colors on sale. Like many other cargo e-bikes, they have accessories such as a front rack, baskets, cushions, a VIP section, running boards, etc. The Packagini, like almost all the other cargo e-bikes on this list, is compatible with the Thule Yup Maxi seat. Now, if you're looking at this e-bike and trying to compare it to other cargo e-bikes, one of the things that makes it different is that Blix equipped it with larger 24-inch diameter tires, and instead of three inches wide, they're a bit narrower at 2.4 inches. This makes the bike feel a bit more nimble and changes both the rider and passenger positions compared to cargo e-bikes with 20-inch wheels. It also has a nicer Acera derailleur, which happens to be the nicest derailleur of all the cargo e-bikes on our list. Trust me, you've heard of this next brand. It's called Flyer, but it comes from Radio Flyer. Yes, the company that made the red wagon that you rode in as a kid. They've been around since 1917, and while e-bikes are a relatively new offering, this is unquestionably a reputable brand, and as such, they produce e-bikes that we can happily recommend. JT has been replacing his own car trips, hauling his two kids on the Flyer L885, priced at $19.99. Here's what I like about their cargo e-bike. It comes in three different sizes and four different colors, so you can be assured that the bike will fit you like a glove, no matter your height. Flyer also went with a unique choice of a larger 26 by 3 inch tire in the front and a smaller 20 by 3 inch tire in the rear. This helps keep the center of gravity low. Fun fact, the mountain bikers in the know refer to this as a mullet setup, but on this e-bike, especially with kids, the party is definitely in the back. It too has Tektro Aries mechanical disc brakes like the Rad Wagon. The battery is 15 amp hours, but there is an option for a secondary battery for an additional $500. The bike has a smaller 500 watt motor, so it seems like Flyer is taking a similar approach to Rad making the bike accessible. It's fine on flat ground, but in hilly Wisconsin, it leaves more power to be desired at times. Flyer is really leading the charge when it comes to safety standards, and their bikes are UL certified. I expect more companies to be following suit as the market continues to mature. Our biggest complaint with the Flyer L885 is the gearing, which makes ghost pedaling a thing as you approach the max speed of 20 miles per hour. Again, going back to the accessibility. It feels great at about 15 miles per hour. And our biggest surprise with Flyer has been their high quality accessories. In particular, the kit and cargo carrier, which transforms this e-bike from a kid hauler to a grocery getter in time thanks to the zip down sides. And if you're looking for something a little less heavy and more nimble and portable, check out the Flyer folding cargo e-bike. I really enjoyed having that e-bike on our most recent visit to Florida. Okay, on to the honorable mentions. Of course, there are quasi cargo e-bikes, Let's call them utility bikes, not minivans of e-bikes, but more of a compact SUV, if you will. Be sure to check out the Blix Dubal and the Rad Runner lineup, and Specialized just released the Hall ST, all linked below. 
The haul is pricey, but taking into account the brand behind this e-bike, it's actually less than I thought. And stay tuned as we're getting our own Bach feats. The Bear Cargo e-bike is one we're excited to test out long term. And on these e-bikes, the kiddos and cargo are in the front. There's also the bunch bike that we previously reviewed. And of course, the premium end of these types of e-bikes, the Urban Aero. We had a blast riding one of these in the Netherlands and I'd own one, but ouch, that price tag. Finally, we need to shout out Turn, the gold standard, if you will, of premium mid-drive cargo e-bikes, but they come with a price to match. We're talking six, seven, eight thousand dollars expensive. For something more premium, but not quite as pricey, the Sierra One is a cool compact belt drive, mid-drive utility e-bike that I got to ride in Arizona recently. Okay, drum roll please, what's my pick? I'm someone people would consider frugal, I'm an optimizer, always looking to get the most for my money, and my choice would have to be the Electric Expedition. It's at a price point that is hard to believe, and I think it's the best cargo e-bike that's sufficient for most riders. Remember to use our links in the description if you're in the market for an e-bike. Thank you so much for your support. Let me know your favorite cargo e-bike down in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, and remember, drive less, e-bike more.